very proud of the fact that the Badgers beat Marquette this year. Now, were you you were at that game, were you not? Uh, I can't remember. Can't yeah. remember. <laughs> can't remember. <laughs> I, f- I remember sending you a text late in the game asking if you could see the scoreboard. I couldn't. Yeah, I was right behind the basketball hoop. I just couldn't see anything. You know, it was real tough. Real tough. So, but at least we didn't have to watch Wisconsin lose in the first round of the uh, NCAA. What are you talking about? 2020 national champs. Asterisk projected. Projected. Or simulated. What? Modeled? Is the word to use these days? <laughs> 2020 national champ. Sorry. I'm sorry. Sorry. We're putting. Well, we were going to win the Big East, anyways, you know. And then go from there. Well, good evening, Parish family and friends. Welcome to another episode of Fireside Chats at SMG. Uh, we're here on a lovely night with a um, not very <laughs> roaring fire. I will say this is the first time Father Bill has no, been no, 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 no. Yeah. I built, I built the fire for like this another episode, certainly, Ooh. certainly. Yeah, and it was a great fire. Right. Maybe I didn't have the right fuel this time. What's what's to blame this time? Uh, we don't have any kindling nor tinder. Yeah, you got to blow on it. Well. I'm not going to blow on it right now. No, probably not. No. Anyway. But at any rate, uh, in a previous episode, we uh, spoke, well, Father Scott spoke with Father Tony. I left and went and took a nap um, about Father Tony's uh, life, his vocation story, uh, his move from India to the United States. And we have received a lot of questions um, about our own, Father Scott and myself, our uh, life stories, our family backgrounds, and how we uh, came to the decision to pursue the priesthood. And so uh, for this episode... Is it a decision? Well, a calling from the Lord. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. But you still have to make the decision to you respond. Still, you do have to respond yes. to grace, yes. yes. Uh, so for this episode, um, I'm going to ask Father Scott where, and, uh, where he's from, what his family's like, and how he came to, uh, to hear the Lord's call to be a priest. So Father Scott, where did you grow up? Uh, Spring Green, Wisconsin. Spring Green, Wisconsin. And uh, no one on earth knows where that is, so... What do you mean? We're talking about, like, one of the most beautiful areas and That's regions true, of the whole state of Wisconsin. It is Frank Lloyd Wright grew up there. Is, is that technically in the Driftless region? Uh, Driftless. Yes, it is. Yeah, it is for sure. Driftless, yeah. Yeah. Um, I grew up in Driftless, and then you have the floodplain of the Wisconsin River kind of sure. right there. Sure. Uh, and then you have American Players Theater there as well. That's true. So. That's true. There's a lot of good things in Wisconsin. There's a lot of good things. There's a lot yeah, of good things. Yeah, I came from Wisconsin. Wisconsin. Where and, you got and, uh, green. and your your home parish was uh, St. Luke's in Plain? St. Luke's in Plain and St. John the Evangelist in Spring Green. Okay. So I had done elementary school in Spring Green and then middle school in Plain because we didn't have a middle a Catholic middle school in Spring Green. In Spring Green. And then went to the public high school River Valley. Mm-hmm. It's a beautiful church there at uh, St. Luke's. Beautiful church, yeah. yeah. That's where I had my first mass at. Awesome, yeah, yeah. All marble, built mm-hmm. 1937, I think. So wow. during the Great Depression, after wow. the previous church had been uh, burned down, and the previous church before that was destroyed in a tornado. So it's the third church they've had on that site. Wow. Yeah, crazy. That's wild. Super wild. Yeah. Candlesticks in the church, all bent because of the tornado that wiped out the first church. Really? Yeah. Oh, very cool. Super cool. Those are cool little uh, tidbits of history when you keep those things around and stuff. But, uh, and uh, so you grew up on a farm. I did, correct. Dairy now, what, farm. A dairy farm. So did you have to work the farm as a kid? I did. Yes. yes. <laughs> and did it you, is part of the uh, part of the calling. Did you enjoy say. that? Uh, there's days in which I enjoyed it. Yeah, I think my dad will tell you that. Yep, he made sure he worked, but he enjoyed some of the days, but not all the days. <laughs> Uh, but I, the thing with the farm is it gives you a ton of experiences. Uh, it gives you a possibility to, like, you learn how to drive at a super young age, let's oh, say. Oh, sure, yeah. Uh, you learn how to, re- like, fix any type of machinery, whether it's welding, whether it's craftsmanship, whether mm-hmm. it's tearing something apart, figuring out how to put it back together, whether it's just managing herds and uh, interaction of large animals, especially sure. when you're a small kid. Sure. Uh, and then just manual labor of throwing hay bales or silage or putting on and off PTO shafts, picking up, mm. uh, unhooking wagons all the time, knowing how to back up a four, uh, two axle wagon mm. 
and mm-hmm. how to how to how to do that, how to do it with a chopper and a chopper box on it. So many good skills. Yeah, no, absolutely. None which translate to the priesthood. None at all. <laughs> well, I would imagine you know some of the the discipline of of growing up on a farm, you know, having to get up early mm-hmm. and 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 get the the work done, get chores in before school. Absolutely, right? those yeah. sorts of things translate very nicely. Yeah, and on a farm, you can't have just one skill set. You have to have many skill sets. Mm-hmm. And for the priesthood, it's many of the same ways. Sure. Like, it's not just that I get up and preach an awesome homily every weekend. You do? Oh, <laughs> really? Oh, yeah. I'll make sure you stay every time now. No, that's, that's it. But it's not just about that. It's uh, ministering to those who are sick, ministering to those who are close to death, talking, having spiritual direction for young people, uh, hearing confessions, uh, being around, managing a parish, administrating a parish, administrating a school, Interacting with school kids, mm-hmm. uh, how to be inspirational to um, children as they're considering a vocation yeah. or inspirational as they figure out their careers and what their vocation is in life and yeah. what God is calling them to. So it's a multifaceted. Yeah, certainly. I mean, farmers to, have to be adaptable. And super adaptable. Have to be adaptable yeah. to a variety of situations. Now, uh, growing up and working on the farm, you had a couple brothers. I did. Correct. How many? You Three, three brothers. brothers. That's So right. two older and one younger. Yes. So mm-hmm. the two older, you know, married and have kids, and now my younger brother is married, and mm-hmm. hopefully kids are on the way. Awesome. So uh, now you went to a terrible university in Milwaukee uh, called Marquette. Oh, oh, you know the name of it. That's I great. Do. Okay, awesome. <laughs> now, was it there that you uh, first heard the call to the priesthood, or was it earlier in your life? It was at Marquette where it finally settled in. Mm -hmm. Early on in life, I think as a young kid, even in as young as second grade, you know, you kind of have an inkling of maybe the priesthood in the back of your mind. It's a possibility, but kind of you say God's calling, going to call somebody else. Mm -hmm. So you grow up not really thinking about it too much. Went through high school as a normal high school kid. We went to mass every weekend. But when I got to Marquette is truly where I kind of settled into my call. Um, Certainly studying biomedical engineering, it was great, but it was at Marquette that I had the opportunity to go to Mass every every night. Mm-hmm. Um, so at Marquette, there's the Joan of Arc Chapel. It sits yes. right in the middle of the whole campus. Mm-hmm. It was a chapel that was built in France in the 15th, 16th century, brought over to the United States, rebuilt in New York, and then in 1966, Marquette bought it off a, far, uh, bought it off a private property. Mm and rebuilt it on Marquette's campus. And St. Joan of Arc herself prayed in that chapel. Correct, yes. yes. In France before yeah. it was, yeah. So, yeah. beautiful chapel. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and that's where daily mass was. Daily mass is there, and so they would have a mass every night at 10 p.m. Oh, wow. Uh, so super late, but mm-hmm. for a college student, yep. it's like perfect. Perfect awesome. time, right. So study until 10 p.m. in the library, Rainer Library, and then uh, come, you know, five to 10, jump out of your seat, and. Uh, with your backpack and go to the chapel and there you're sitting with 35 or 40 other college students all there to mm-hmm. pray late at night and it's truly the most formative part of my college. So what was it about going to the Mass there at the Joan of Arc Chapel that eventually enabled you to hear the call to the priesthood from the Lord? It was kind of always something in the back of my mind. I re- always remember that John Paul II, when he was a young child, hmm. went to daily mass as a student uh, early in the morning before school started. And I was like, that's truly, he's a holy man, mm-hmm. inspirational man. Mm-hmm. Um, and so when I got to Marquette, that was the first time I ever had that opportunity to do that. I always lived way out in the country. You sure. never get into town. Uh, and so then I had that opportunity to go to daily mass. That's the first thing. The second thing is, is it's 10 p.m. at night. You're able to do all your work, your college work. Hopefully get it done by 10 p.m. But mm-hmm. it's a great way to, like, everything I've done today, Lord, I did it for you. And you come to the mass and say, but this is the one thing that truly matters. Sure. This is the one work uh, of your body, blood, soul, and divinity present before us. You're dying on the cross for us. You're giving yourself in a holy sacrifice again here on this altar back to God the Father that truly I can enter into yeah. and say this is m- my work uh, or a work that I desire to give back to God. Hmm. Um, maybe I didn't have that notion at the beginning. Sure. Certainly did not. Sure. Uh, but certainly 
can see that God is present here. Mm -hmm. And that's the one thing I want to be is in your presence, Lord. Well, and that's part of discernment too, it seems, you know, there's these kind of seeds planted along the way or little like signposts along the way that perhaps uh, you don't really notice them for what they truly are at the time. No, no, no. And then you look back <laughs> and see like, oh, God really was preparing me for this all along. It wasn't just yesterday when I decided, you know, I think I should think about being a priest. It was years ago, years ago. that this process started. So, uh, oh, go ahead. On one, at one point along that route, I remember I had a spiritual director that I went to every two weeks to every month, kind of. And I was in a meeting with him as a, as a directee, and I left the meeting, and I go, turned back to Father Ron, and I just looked at him, and I said, I don't know how the Lord's going to do this. I have no idea. But I know, at the end of the day, at some point in my future, I will have to go to seminary. Hmm. So I remember making that or talking about that with him. Maybe it was my junior year of college or something sure. like that. And God, how God did it, I only, God only knows. But so we got there. Uh, how, how did at least your decision-making process, like what were the things that happened that eventually made you say, okay, this is now the time where I have to go and yeah. try the seminary? So I kind of figured it, there was a couple stages. <laughs> mm -hmm. As there always are. As there are. So I went through two, week, or two years of college, got really into my faith, or just had the opportunity to go on a number of retreats, sell, or be a part of Mass, sing during the Mass in a choir, um, prayed every day, had a spiritual director, so everything got in order, let's say, right, in my right. life. So you get to that point, and then you say, I know where this is going, and I ain't going there. Right, right, <laughs> yep, yep. <laughs> And so then you got to put everything to a screeching halt. Mm -hmm. And so that's after two years, I kind of stopped going to Mass uh, on a daily basis. I still went every weekend, you know, but stopped doing that. Prayer life diminished quite a bit because sure. I knew if I was going to continue that conversation with God that... You knew he, where it was ending up. <laughs> it was going to end up. Yes. Uh, certainly enjoyed my time in college and my degree. And so I said, we'll finish out college. And so I did that, um, but kind of towards the end of college then, uh, I was able to, a few things had changed in my life a little bit. Came to the summer, was going to work on my master's degree, and my professor, who I'd worked with for three years, sent me the eight topics that I was to work on oh, wow. in the research lab. And he says, you've worked on all eight of them, pick which one you want, and write your thesis, sure. your master's thesis. So it's over. And I got that email on July 12th. I remember walking out of the research lab, calling up Bishop Morley, and I said, when can we have dinner? He says, two days from now, July 14th. Sure. So I jumped in my car, not knowing what I was going to say or do or any of my actions. Walked into his apartment. We sat down and caught up, had a drink, and uh, told him everything I was going to do, my master's degree. And I looked away from him, and I knew at that moment the Holy Spirit's like, it's now. <laughs> And looked back at him and said, Bishop, I need to go to seminary. Mm. You know? And he about fell out of his chair. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, can, I can envision that. Huh? Yeah. Huh? <laughs> yeah, this is the happiest day of my life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, exactly. It's my worst day of my life. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Now, so. but can you, I mean, you know, you say it was the worst day of your life. Because, of course, there's a part of you that is dying, right? In yeah. that, right? Part of the priesthood is, is joining Christ in his death. But of course, there's also, you know, the Lord rises from the dead. And I think most of us have some sort of, you know, consolation. Like, wow, actually, this is really, you know, when we give up that yeah. fight. Was there some sort of experience of like, I feel at peace and... Not immediately. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, I remember having to go home the next day. I remember the next day, so... To ca a caveat to that, six weeks later, I landed in Belgium to begin philosophy studies. Right. So I had six weeks to move out of college or move out of Milwaukee. Uh, for seminary, there's a lot of examinations we have to get ready for. Yes, there are. So I had to do FBI fingerprinting. I had to apply for my visa. Yep. I had to do two psych evaluations, yep. Yep. a full medical exam, oh, yeah. eye doctor appointment, dental appointment, yep. and get that all done in six weeks to enter seminary. So it's, it's not like I had a lot of time to 
think about yeah, it. Yeah, you didn't have much uh, process time. Process time. No. Uh, but I think, yeah, it probably took a year or two into seminary. I mean, it's a relief to say yes, mm-hmm. certainly. And you knew that something was right. But it takes a year or two years to finally settle in and say yeah. every day, yeah, this is definitely the right thing. Sure. And I remember one of the kids asked us about our vocation story, mm-hmm. and they asked, "Well, what would you be if you weren't a priest? Yeah. Or how would you be like? How would you be a absolutely miserable? <laughs> yeah, sure, certainly. So certainly. there's no greater joy than uh, absolutely than answering what God calls you to do in your life. Mm-hmm. Now, you you, uh, you going to daily mass played a big part in your mm-hmm. vocational discernment. Can you talk about? the experience of kind of the culminating moment of being ordained and then celebrating the Holy Mass for the first time. It's weird. It is weird. <laughs> it's very weird. <laughs> not, to, not to play it down too much. Uh, yeah, it's strange in the sense that here you're holding the body of Christ in your hands, confecting the Eucharist. Mm-hmm. Out of your hands, which were just anointed a day or the day before, at the, at the ordination yeah. mass here at St. Mary Gretti. And now it's those same hands that are able to make Jesus or like confect our Lord in the Eucharist, right. body, blood, soul, and divinity. Right. And you just want to set it down and back away. Right. Um, and so that's the first thing. I mean, the first mass I celebrated, I remember it was in the church I was baptized in, uh, St. Killian's in Bear Valley, just a little tiny country church. Oh, wow. Well. Uh, but to think that there I, I'm a priest, and no one else was there. It was myself and a priest friend, sure. Father Ed Maxfield. Oh, very nice. Yeah. Oh, very good. Very uh, good. But just to, walk, just to pray the Mass as a priest for the second time, really, but for the first time alone. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then the next day we have our Mass of Thanksgiving, which is at St. Luke's, and all the family and friends, and it was beautiful. And I just remember... One of the good priest friends of mine just said, you know, just pray, pray the Mass. Mm-hmm. You know, the words are there, the words that Christ has given us, mm-hmm. and just insert yourself in there. Don't worry about anything else. And that's, you have complete confidence then. Like, there's, you're not nervous about yeah. anything else. If, yeah, Christ gives you that strength and that confidence, mm-hmm. even through his words as a priest. Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, of course, the experience of the first Mass or the first few Masses has a particular, you know, novelty and emotional response yep. just because, holy cow, I've been preparing for this for years, and now... <laughs> some more than others. Well, you yeah, know, I mean, some of us wanted to be very prepared. Very uh, prepared. Very. And, you know, but then uh, you go on, and now that's, that's just a daily part of daily your part. life. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think that was a, a wonderful uh, summation of your life. I'm very glad that a very limited portion was dedicated to speaking about that weird university in Milwaukee. <laughs> um, and, you know, I know my, I myself am very grateful for your priesthood, Father Scott, yeah. as our parish is, and grateful that you responded to the Lord's call. And uh, with that, uh, we ask, of course, always your continued prayers for us and know that we are praying for you always.